Welcome back everyone. This is Nana with Tangled Time Arts and today we are working on the mosaic tile. We are on number three uh, which includes days nine through twelve and this project is inspired from the seven forests five rivers a fragment of your imagination challenge and it's an annual January challenge and you can still get the handout, the information's in the description. So today we're going to be taking a look at the square fragment partial and the round, the circular fragment bees, the letter B, not the insect. And then for our triangular fragment, we have Kupu Pali. And our seed is going to be Kahlua. Well, one petal, one leaf of Kahlua. All right. To get started, you will need a black pen. I'm using a Sacro Micron 01. I have a number two pencil, a Tortillon, and I also have a Micron 10, just in case there are areas that we need to fill in or ink in. I'm going to put those aside. And then you'll also need a tile. This one comes in the handout, in the packet. You can print it on computer paper or trace it onto, this is an apprentice tile size. Um, I chose to draw the string, the reticula onto a three and a half inch by three and a half inch original white Zentangle tile. And I have another video for that. So um, you, you choose either you photocopy the larger size one or transfer it onto the smaller size. All right. So with that, we are going to get started with our square fragment, which is partial. And I'm going to be using my 01. Um, as a lot of you know, I like to use the apprentice pen or the PN, but for this particular project, because we're working with fragments and it's small spaces, I am using the 01 because it has a finer point. All right, partial is a fun one, and we are going to turn that into something else you'll see. So to start with partial, I'm going to work clockwise in this area here. And then we start with simply making an arc from the center to the end. And we also do that from the center to the other end. And I'm just picking this square to work with because I like working clockwise. You could pick any of them, but um, working clockwise is going to form a pattern within a pattern. Once we have that done, we're going to form another arc from here over to here. just like that. Then we're going to divide this. Uh, these are not exactly squares. They are a little bit skewed. So when I'm dividing this in half, I'm actually aiming towards the corner, uh, but I'm only going to go up to the arc like that. So that's our third step. And then we're going to make kind of a valley or a V shape. I like to start at the top and then I come in and then over like that. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to rotate a little and then I'm going to do the same four steps in the next square. So we have an arc and an arc. We're going to make another arc there. 
we are going to divide that in half, kind of aiming towards the corner there, but stopping at the arc. And then we put in our fancy little V-shape. I'm going to rotate and repeat. And when I make these V-shaped ones, I'm kind of trying to match where the previous one was so it looks a little more polished. And then we're back at the last section. We divide that and put in our fancy little V shapes like that. All right, so we used those. You, you can't actually really see the squares anymore because now we have just a nice shape that incorporates those guidelines, which is really cool. I'm going to kind of turn this into a flower by making these areas petals. So I'm going to do a little bit of striping in here. And this is optional. Um, sometimes I like to add to the tangles and kind of make them my own. So I'm doing some striping. like that. And then I also want to add like a little bit of detail in the center and I'm just adding a line or two. From the center out. Just to make it a little bit more flower like. And then I am going to switch to my Micron 10. And I am actually going to ink in this area here. All right, so I have that section done and we're going to do the same over here. So I'm going to switch back to my 01. And if you don't have different sizes of pens, that's fine. It will just take a little longer to ink those areas in. 
All right, so I'm going to again start in the upper left and work my way around. So we have an arc, an arc, and another arc. And then we are going to divide that and put in this kind of V shape. And we're just going to work our way around. And we're in our last section. This one's a little bit of a tight fit. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing or I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add the striping here, which is optional. And we're at our last leaf, which is interesting because now we've made the seed shape. Within our other fragment. I'm just going to add some lines there for some detail. All right, and I'm going to switch to the 10. And I think actually an apprentice pen would work well for this too because it's a little thicker than the 01, or if you have a PN. Just rotate as you go and take your time. All right, so we have those two sections finished. We'll do some shading later. So day 10 is, it says bloom your own garden of bees, but they mean the letter B, not the insect. So this one 
is deceptively simple, but there's a little bit of a trick to it. So I'm gonna start in the larger circle areas. And let's start with the triangle. And the easiest way to describe this is we have our initial triangle and then we are going to extend each side of the triangle. So you want to extend it about the same length. So like that, this is roughly the same as this. So you're going to extend it to the upper right. And then you're going to extend the next one. You're going to go down to the right. And then you're going to go to the left. So you have something that looks like that. And then I'm going to rotate a little. Um, so I have one of the extended lines on the top. And what we're gonna do is draw a B. So this is your first line of the B. Start here at the top, and then you're going to come in at the point of the triangle. And that's how you are forming your B. And then you rotate and do the same. And then rotate again and do the same. Okay, so those are the initial Bs. And then we're going to extend our lines a little bit more. And since we're working in as fragments in the small space, we're a little bit limited. So then our Bs kind of turn into threes. So at the top of where we extended, we are going to make a three shape. So we're going to go one, two, and our aim is the middle of that second bump of a B. So one, two, like that. Rotate. And again, you're starting at the top of the line. One, two. And rotate, starting at that end of that extension, one, two. And then as space permits, you can add more threes where you kind of think they would fit in. So I feel like I could fit one in there and then I'm going to rotate and then maybe I could do something like that and that so it gets to be pretty random at that point and then I think let's see maybe I can add one more here like that so we have kind of a flower and in order to finish our flower inside the original triangle, you draw a little circle and you ink in the little spaces around the circle within the triangle. And then I'm also gonna ink in these outer spaces they're kind of small, but it just makes it look a little more, um, I guess, flower-like. All right, so that is our first circle with bees. Just wanna make sure 
it's focusing correctly. Yeah, okay. And that's what we're gonna do for each of the circles, uh, circle fragment areas. So again, we're gonna start with a triangle. We're gonna extend up and to the right, down and to the right, and to the left. And then we're gonna put in our bees. Your bees might be smaller than mine or larger than mine. All right, once we have our first row of bees, then we extend, extend, extend. And then we're gonna put in our threes. So we're gonna start with threes. That. And then from there, you're just adding three shapes wherever you feel like they can fit. So that's going to be a little bit random. So yours will look different from mine. do fill in these areas you can do that now or after you finish the center it's on my mind so I'm just going to do it and I think I can fit another three in there. Yeah. All right, and then I can come back to my center and put my circle in. and fill in that area around it. And then we'll go to our next kind of large sized one. Extend our lines, put in our threes. There's a lot of rotating with this one, a whole lot of rotating. And then we are going to randomly add some threes. All right, so we have our three larger areas 
pretty much done here. And then we just have our smaller, our smaller circles. So with those, you probably can't get too many layers in there. So we'll just do what we can do. And let's see if there's anything random I can add. Just kind of doing each section as I move around the circle. And these spaces are definitely tiny. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, and there's not much area to extend to. So I'll just try to add some threes as best as I can. And then I think that's about all I can do. And I'm going to fill in the area around. The circle in and finish that off. And our smallest circle here. So this is definitely challenging in the smaller areas for sure. All right, there's not really much room to extend, so I'm just going to fill in the threes where I can. I've got a little circle in the center. And I think you can put a three in here. And let's rotate around. I'm just going to fill this in because I'm going to leave that like that. All right. These are getting very small. So take your time and be patient. If you need to take a little break, go ahead because it can be a little challenging on the eyes, especially if you have bifocals or progressives like I do. All right, let's see what we can do here. About it. And I 
can put a three in here. Finish with the circle. All right. And two very small circles are left. And on to our last one. And put in that last tiny little circle. And that's about all I can do right now for the bees. So they look like they do like a look like a tiny little garden right there. A garden of little maybe carnations. Um, so that's cute. And now we're going to move on to January. So that was January 10 bees and January 11 is Kupu Pali. I hope I'm saying that right. And we're going to add an aura, I believe. So Kupu Pali is kind of a very fluid stroke that ends up kind of like a heart shape. So I'm going to start over. We're going to do these three triangle areas again and do this fragment um, it's just a very fluid stroke. So starting kind of at the bottom, you're going to come up like a heart, loop around, and then come back down like that. And then we're going to add a little bit of an aura inside. on both sides. Okay, we'll try that again. So I'm kind of starting a little off from the center point at the bottom and I'm leaving a little space between the guidelines and it's just the fluid motion of coming up, looping around, coming up and back down. Okay. And then I'm adding a little bit of an aura on the inside there and on the inside on both sides. So it almost looks like a ribbon. And then we have one more to do. Starting at the bottom, coming up in a fluid motion, loop around and come back down. and add our auras. Now this is where you kind of have to make a choice whether you want to ink in these outside areas, the outside and the inside, or whether you actually want to ink in the ribbon part. I'm calling it a ribbon, but it's the actual kupu 
Polly, and I'm going to ink in this part here that we did with the aura. This would be probably, if you want to add color to it, this would be one of the areas that instead of black, you could add color with either a gel pen or a marker. but it has a lovely heart shape to it. All right coming right along. So we have our triangle fragments. So we did our square, our around the circle fragments, and our triangle fragments. And now we have our seed fragments. And for the seed fragment for January 12, that would be just a single petal leaf of Kahlua. Kahlua usually has, I, I believe it's four petals, uh, but we're just going to do one. And for, I'm going to start with the largest seed because that's going to be easiest. Um, I'm just going to put one kind of in the center here. And so we're going to have this shape. It's almost like a U shape like that. And then you bring this in a little bit like that. And then I kind of like to make this like a flame on the top. And I'm actually going to add some weight to these lines, add a little love to these lines, just so that it sticks out a little bit more. It stands out a little bit more. So it's not so much that I'm adding an aura as much as I'm adding weight to my lines. All right, and then I could add a little bit to the bottom as well. And then outside of this, I think I'll add just a little bit of an aura for interest. Like that. And then I'm going to I think I'm just going to ink in those areas. Which is optional, but I think it'll add a little drama to it. All right, and then we have three more smaller seed shapes and we are going to do the same thing. It is getting pretty tiny. So I'm 
So just do the best that you can. Yeah, those are really, really small. So if you're finding that the space is too small to put your Kahlua petal leaf, I would probably just ink, ink it totally in because we do have one here. I'm going to leave that as is. There's not a lot more I can do with that because it's so tiny. Um, and I think we're done with our pen. So you can put your cap on your pen and then pick up a number two pencil. So we're going to start with our square areas. And I'm just going to add a little bit of shading in the center of each of these. And there's different ways you could shade this, but I'm just playing around with it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of shading to one side of the leaves. And I'm just running that down the center vein, but always staying on the same side. And then I think I'd like to add a little bit of shading to the corners as well. And we're going to do the same thing over here. A little to the corners. And then we have our bees. And there's, again, different variations as far as um, what you can do with this. But I think I'm just going to add a little bit of shading around our initial bees. And we'll see what kind of an effect that gives us. And again, there's lots of rotating with, with the bees. So I'm just putting the graphite around our original bee, bee shapes. like that. Okay. And then we have our poo poo poly in the triangular areas. 
Uh, there's not a lot to do with this. I think I'll, I'll add um, shading to the corners of each triangle shape of the fragments here. Like that. And then with the Kahlua, not much there either, but I think I'll just add some in there like that. And then we'll take up our Tortillon. And we are going to start blending. I like to start with the center of the flower and work that out. And it's just a gentle back and forth with the tortillon. If you don't have a tortillon, you can use a cotton swab. All right. And then we can also get our corners. That is that showing up for you. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> and we'll do the same on our other area of partial. And this goes pretty quickly. That. And then we have our bees. And I'm just softening the graphite around the original bee shapes. All right, and then moving down to our tri triangular fragments with the Kupu Poly. And I'm just kind of doing the, the corners here because there's really not much, there's not much to shade in there. And then finally on to the Kahlua, I just added a little bit in this bottom area. And then with the graphite that's already on the tortillon, I can add a little bit to these bottom ones as well. And I think that's about all that we can do for tile three for the moment. At the very end, when we put it all together, we might add a little color or some inking in these areas and add a little more shading but we'll have to kind of wait to see um, when it all comes together. At this point, we can turn it over and fill in our information. I like to put my name and the event. This is 2024, FYIC a fragment of your imagination. And this was tile three already. And the, the patterns that we had were partial, the tangles that we had, um, Bs, which is a capital letter B with an S. And then we had Kupu Poly, K-U-P-U-P-O-L-L-Y and 
Kaloa, K-A-L-O-O-A. You can put the date on if you'd like. So that's our third, our third tile. So we're gonna take that and we have our tile one here. Let me zoom out a little bit. So we have our tile one, our tile two, and our tile three. Zoom back in. Can we get that all in there? Sort of, doesn't quite fit. Um, but you can kind of see how it's, it's all coming together and we're getting this nice circle here and these kind of rays coming out. Um, once we get the fourth tile in there, you can at home kind of play around with what colors you might want to add or any shading that you might like to add. All right, so that's it for tile three and that was January 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. And I'll be doing the video for the next one, tell for shortly, probably tomorrow. So I look forward to doing that and exploring those days. And we're, we're catching up rapidly. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am and learning as much as I am. It's definitely a learning process and I'm having a lot of fun with you. And don't forget to take the time to admire the work you did today because this is challenging. This is, this is cool stuff. Thanks for joining me. Love you guys. See you next time.